So, my name is Anne Leida. Welcome to the webinar Artificial Intelligence and Software Testing. We are going to tell you all about the new A4Q certification about artificial intelligence and software testing. The agenda for today is as follows. First, I'm going to introduce myself and our speaker. Then I'm going to give you a short introduction about the International Software Quality Institute, or short ISQI. Then you'll have a presentation of the new training course and certification, Artificial Intelligence and Software Testing, which will address the topics why we need new techniques to test AI, who the course is aimed at, and what you will learn during the course. Then you will have a chance to uh, ask us some questions uh, regarding the subject of today. I would like to kindly request that during the presentations you do not ask any questions. You can of course make notes or you can already write your questions down on the questions form or the chat function that is part of the webinar tool. And we will get that, we'll then get to it at the end. So let's start with an introduction. As I said before, my name is Anna Leida van der Meentschepes. I'm a certification manager here at ISQI. Um, the speaker of today is Adam Leon Smith. He is the Chief Technology Officer of Dragonfly and a subject matter expert in the field of AI and software testing. Let me first start with telling you a bit more about ISQI. ISQI was founded in 2004, meaning that this year we are celebrating our 15 year anniversary. The company started out in Germany and our headquarters are still based in Potsdam, which is close to Berlin. However, we've grown a lot over the years and now we also have a daughter company in the Netherlands, in the UK and in the United States. We Okay, um, we give exams in over six continents, in more than 100 countries, and in more than 10 languages. More than 30,000 people a year get certified by ISQI, and we have a team of 645 invigilators working for us worldwide. So here are some facts and figures. As I said, we have more than 30,000 IT professionals being certified by ISQI each year. We have four ways, uh, four different ways of exams to choose from. Paper-based exams, digital exams, which we call our so-called SMEX option. Flex exams, which are remote proctor exams um, that you can take from your own office or house. And then we also provide exams via peers and view test centers, which can be found overall in the world. We have a network of over 250 accredited training providers that we work closely together with. And we have, as I said before, more than 500 invigilators working for us worldwide. More than 50 internationally recognized certifications are currently part of our portfolio and it is growing every day. The portfolio consists of certifications in various categories. We've got Scrum and Agile method certifications certifications in the field of software development, software architecture, requirements engineering, usability and management. And the largest part of our portfolio consists of certifications in the field of software testing. And that is also where the new certification that we are discussing today, artificial intelligence and software testing can be found. The role of ISCI, or ISQI, as a certification body, is part of a structure that has been set up to maintain the quality and security of the whole certification structure. There are three major roles in this. Um, ISQI is the knowledge auditor. We are the exam authority. We conduct the exams, we issue certificates, and we make sure um, quality assurances are adhered to and uh, that there is ample data security. Then. We work closely together with the knowledge generators, which are the program boards. They create the syllabus, develop the exam questions, and set up the exam structures and exam rules. And then we work closely together with training providers, or in this role overview, the knowledge mediators. They develop the training materials and they conduct the uh, certification trainings. 
as you probably are all aware, because I'm guessing most of you have seen it already, there's a new landing page for this new project, um, Artificial Intelligence and Software Testing. We give you the URL here. You do not need to write it down. As I said, this webinar will be recorded and shared with you afterwards. You can always contact us at any time if you need it before and uh, can't find the link anymore. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to hand over to Adam now, and he's going to tell you all about artificial intelligence and software testing. Thank you very much, Anna Leda. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Excellent. Okay, so let's start with just reflecting on what we mean by artificial intelligence. So we really mean systems that have components that perform functions that are associated with human intelligence, such as reasoning and, and learning. And there's multiple types of artificial intelligence systems, ranging from the symbolic, rule-based expert knowledge systems, to sub-symbolic, the machine learning systems that are becoming increasingly prevalent across the technology landscape and the business landscape. Because these systems are associated with human intelligence, such as reasoning and learning, the word trustworthy comes up a lot. People want AI systems to be trustworthy, dependable, reliable. And when you get to the bottom of what trustworthy really means, it's mostly about quality. There's a whole range of issues that relate specifically to testing AI systems. And there's a whole range of issues that don't relate specifically to AI systems, but are made much more difficult to handle in an AI environment. So we need new QA and testing tools, techniques and processes to deal with these many problems. And we also have the opportunity to use AI systems in order to improve our testing processes. And in this course, we'll try to give you a, a, a grounding, both in artificial intelligence technology, but also in both the testing processes that support testing AI-based systems and the way AI-based systems can improve your testing processes themselves. I'm unable to change the slide, if you wouldn't mind pushing us forward one slide, Anna Leda. So one of the first problems that we suffer when handling AI-based systems is the lack of specification. And this is particularly true around systems that use machine learning and data science, which work fundamentally of correlations between inputs to the system, which is usually in the form of data, and outputs from the system, which may be in the form of classifications, might be in the form of numbers, might be in the form of recommendations. The fact that we need to specify these systems less in a machine learning context is great for developing systems and great for exploring data to see how you can force a machine to understand it and react to data. But it's not great for testers. It's not great for defining the success criteria in any level of detail when you're testing an AI system. Even when the relationship between the inputs and outputs are clear, it can become quite difficult to understand how to validate and verify those systems at scale. This can also be called an oracle problem. And one of the things that fundamentally uh, perpetuates throughout our course is the understanding of what an oracle problem is and the specific tools and techniques you can use to plan and execute testing when you don't have a clear oracle. The next problem the next problem relates to data. Sorry, back one slide, Anna Leda. So in a AI-based environment where we have real world sensors that are consuming data about the physical environment and making recommendations upon those upon the, sorry, Anna Leda, it's the next slide. Hi, you should be able to move the uh, presentation yourself I gave you. Yes. Oh, I can. 
it's just a bit of a delay. Apologies. Okay, folks, so one of the, <laughs> I think we might both be pressing the button now. So another of the problems we have is the systems are often designed to mimic human capabilities. And whilst it's easy to understand conceptually the capabilities that a human would have, it can be difficult to define that in any detail. What if you're handed a requirement to make sure a system is fair or ethical? What if you're handed a requirement to make sure that users cannot determine the difference between an AI system and a real human? That's actually got a name that's called a Turing test, which is one of the things we'll cover in the report, in the, in the course. And this is a way of determining whether humans can tell the difference between an AI system and another human in a blind test where they aren't aware which is real. This is great scientifically and conceptually, but isn't practical in a world where we're stuck between this science fiction version of AI, the all knowing, fully aware AI system that's able to interpret all the data that it has, and where we are now in a world with narrow AI, with small AI components integrated together in order to produce an overall system. Another problem that we have with AI systems is something that we call the no free lunch theorem. This is the theory that any algorithm is equivalent in terms of its accuracy when it's assessed across all possible problems. This is a, a mathematical theory, but it's extremely important because AI systems are typically trained and developed to deal with a specific problem in a specific context. When reapplying that system to different data sets, to different contexts, to different users, to different regions, what you quickly find is that the accuracy and the performance of the algorithms changes. This is called the ability to generalize and is one of the fundamental problems that underpins accuracy within AI systems. One of the other problems we have is where we're writing systems where we don't know the answer. And we're writing the programs in order to find out that answer. This doesn't have to be anything as complicated as the search for extraterrestrial life or some other theoretical, scientific or mathematical problem. It can be as simple as making recommendations to humans where humans have a different view of those recommendations. And that might be from an expert perspective or an end user perspective. Think about a system that makes a medical diagnosis. It's very difficult to prove that that system is right without consulting with experts. But what about a system where experts don't necessarily agree? Where that medical diagnosis is given differently by different experts? How do we manage that kind of testing process? Consulting with users, but on expert recommendations. Apologies for jumping around the slides. I'm getting the hang of it now, I think. One of the other problems we've got is something called drift. So many, many uh, AI systems, particularly ones that use machine learning, rely on the correlation between input data and output data. And that mathematical correlation can change over time. To give a few examples, a system that makes recommendations to internet users may become less effective when social attitudes change. Perhaps something as simple as people's views about gender roles. Another example, very specific to testing, is if this, the, the models used in the system reinforce themselves using reinforcement learning based on what they observe. What if you run test automation very, 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 very regularly focused on a particular area? Based on ISTQB foundation, you'd expect to suffer from something called the pesticide paradox. But 
when you have self-optimizing systems, the system will start to behave perfectly in the areas you're testing using your automated tests, potentially to the detriment of other functionality. So the more you test specific functionality, the worse other functionality will behave. Another problem we suffer from with AI systems, which I mentioned before, is ethics and fairness. Whatever fairness means to you or your company, there are societal concerns about the use of AI and concerns about the decisions it can take without the involvement of humans. These are key issues which aren't for testers and quality specialists to solve, but many of the tools and techniques that come down to measuring fairness and measuring ethics are applied using testing techniques. Another problem is something we call automation bias or complacency bias. What if the AI system is trusted too much? A real example of this is one of the Uber drivers that uh, crashed a semi-self-driving car in the US. This car needed a human driver there to override the, the, the car in case it made the incorrect decision. But over time, the human driver became complacent, stopped paying attention to what the car was doing. And when the car made an incorrect decision, the human driver was too busy looking at their phone and was unable to, unable to prevent the car hitting a pedestrian. It's a dramatic example, but this, this example pervades throughout the simplest and most basic testing of AI systems. I've been in, in projects where they are replacing humans with machine learning based recommendations that a human just has to validate. They don't have to do all the typing, they don't have to do the thinking they did before, they just have to hit OK or cancel. And those systems speed things up no end. But when you actually check into some of the data that humans are approving, you see a drop in the quality of the outputs of the overall system. So planning user testing requires thinking about human psychology as much as it does technology. Another problem is bias, not in the ethical sense, but in the data sense. Machine learning models, which we're using to create automation without specifying the desired behaviors, work because they make decisions based on data they've experienced. All machine learning models are in some degree biased towards the data that's being used to train them, the data they've seen before. Exposing a model to a limited data set is a guaranteed way to ensure that you see bias in your final system. And I would describe this as the number one problem within quality of AI-based machine learning systems. So this course has been designed to help software testers and engineers, designers who are thinking about AI systems and thinking about how to verify and validate them, anyone involved in coaching, training, or managing teams who are starting to look at AI and quality, and business analysts who are trying to understand the value of AI to the business. There is an AI bubble, if you like, in terms of investment, in terms of hype, and it's super important for testers and quality specialists to bring a more skeptical view to the table, to understand the limitations for AI application and common quality issues that can be experienced and techniques to mitigate those. After going through this course and the certification, some of the key objectives are first of all, to be able to perform testing activities, analysis, design, execution on a system that integrates one or more AI-based components, but also to look at AI-based testing approaches and to be able to look at using AI to support your testing activities in the context of your organizational goals. So let's go through the detailed content of the course. The course is divided into three parts. The first part is the key aspects of AI that you need to understand. So as I said before, 
AI systems are systems which exhibit some human characteristics, such as reasoning and learning. So the first focus of the course is to define and understand intelligence and what that means in the context of AI. And also to explore the Turing test that I mentioned before and its practical limitations. Following that, there's a brief history lesson on AI because it's important to understand that many of the techniques that we'll be using date back to the 1950s and 1960s. What's really changed about AI is the diversity, volume and real time nature of the data that's available in the world and the ability to use machine learning to accelerate the achievement of AI goals. But before we come on to machine learning, we'll talk about symbolic AI and we'll focus on different types of logic that, you, that systems use. We'll talk about knowledge based systems and also techniques like constraint satisfaction problems. These techniques are still heavily used and will continue to be used. But then we'll talk about subsymbolic AI, also known as machine learning. We're going to give you examples of ways that different types of machine learning can be used. You're going to learn some metrics that we can use to discuss machine learning. And then we're going to go in, in a bit more detail into some specific algorithms, Bayesian networks, k-means clustering, perceptron learning, and support vector machines. We're going to talk you through typical activities that are performed when applying machine learning to a specific context, and talk about some, some more about bias and ethical issues that can occur in AI systems. So that's part one which will give you an overview of AI itself. Part two is about testing systems with AI components. So we're going to talk about some definitions, testable systems, non-testable systems, deterministic and non-deterministic systems and probabilistic systems. And we're going to talk about a number of the problems that can occur when trying to establish the test basis for an AI system and how that can cause you real problems during test execution. We're going to talk in detail about the no free lunch theorem and some of the quality issues that can arise from the machine learning training process. We're going to explain why there's a trade off between bias and variance in machine learning and also talk more about the concept of drift, which I expressed before as a change in the correlation between inputs and outputs to a system. We're going to explain why testing activities can be used to help mitigate ethical issues. And we're going to talk about human in the loop systems and how that can impact your testing processes. We'll also talk more about automation bias and also adversarial actors, ways that people with negative intentions can manipulate live AI systems. After we've got you up to speed with the basic quality issues that are unique to AI, we'll talk more about some of the testing techniques. First of all, we'll ground you in machine learning model training and how that fits into the testing process and why it's fundamentally different to traditional unit testing. And we'll also talk you through the different types of defects that can be injected during this process. Then we'll move on to talk about AI test environments. These can get much more complicated than traditional test environments. What if you have multiple intelligent agents within your environment? Where does the environment stop? Is it just discrete or is it continuous? Do your agents react to a single stimulus or is there an episodic sequential nature to things? And finally, how does data play into your environment? Now data is of such importance in how the AI system makes decisions. Is it part of your test environment definition? We'll then go on to strategies to test AI based systems. We'll talk about some of the upstream issues like how you define good acceptance criteria for AI systems. We'll talk about specific techniques that are useful for functional testing, metamorphic testing, external validity testing, 
A-B testing and the participation of experts in your testing process. Indeed, we'll teach you how to do metamorphic testing and how to write and execute tests that fall in that category. We'll show you how to apply the right testing levels to different types of AI systems. And we'll focus as well on the importance of integration testing. We'll also talk about acceptance testing. As I said before, the way humans use and approach AI is equally important to the behavior, the technical behavior of the AI system. And finally, in this section, we'll talk about testing techniques for looking for unwarranted algorithmic bias. And we'll show you how to apply some of the metrics that we initially covered in part one to your testing process. Given the more statistical nature of testing with sub-symbolic AI, we'll cover topics like statistical significance. In part three, we'll cover how to use AI to support your testing process. So first of all, we'll explain why AI can't directly solve testing problems and how it won't uh, replace test analysis. We'll talk more about testing oracles and we'll go through the different tasks in testing and quality assurance where AI can be useful and talk about specific algorithms you can use for things like test data generation. We'll cover how to use AI in different levels of testing, whether it's component testing, integration or system testing, and cover some of the additional techniques such as visual test automation and identifier selection. And we'll even get you to try out one of the popular AI testing tools that's available on the market. Finally, we'll cover how to assess AI tool vendor claims skeptically for a specific testing task. During part one and part two of the course, you will have gained an understanding of some of the key quality problems that can apply to AI. And this part will allow you to apply your knowledge of those problems to assess testing tools. So this is a three day training course. Day one is really focused on the key aspects. Day two on testing AI systems and day three on using AI to support testing. The training course is also partnered with a, an exam. The exam is much like that that you would sit for other ISTQB or a for q courses. And often will be sat as part of the course itself. The exam has 40 questions and a pass mark of 65%. And this exam is conducted in English. So I think at this point, just to run through a few last things and then we'll go to Q&A. So the training course will be offered by ISQI partners. In the first instance, RBCS in the United States and Canada will be offering the course and my company Dragonfly will be offering the course as well and you can see the email address in the middle of the page if you have questions about the schedule. The exam is also available online by ISQI but we're also available on AI at isqi.org ISQI for any of your other questions. And finally there's a grassroots Slack community building up around the topics of AI and QA. And there's an invitation link at the bottom of the screen, which you may want to take a screenshot of as it's a series of characters. And I think we'll leave this on the screen as we go to questions and answers. All right, thank you very much, Adam. Um, if anyone has a question, you can either raise your hand, um, and if you're not sure how to do that, um, you can type your question into the chat or into the questions part. So I have a question come up, coming up already, Adam. Um, which types of AI systems will this course be useful for? Uh, that's, that's a great question. So we've tried to cover as many different types as possible. So not just machine learning systems, but rule-based expert systems as well. Within the course, we'll talk about some specific examples that you'll do uh, 
uh, practical exercises upon. And we'll cover planning testing on three different types of system. So one is a, recommend a recommender system, another is a, a physical system that operates in the real world, for example. So we aim to cover complex systems that deliver automation without specification, and also systems that apply human characteristics such as reasoning and learning. Um, Adam, do I need to be able to code to take part in the training? Thanks, you, you don't. There is some code that will be displayed during the training course, and this will be explained by the, the trainer. There is also some use of tools, which it might be useful to have an understanding of, say, HTML, but it isn't a prerequisite to be able to code. And part of that is because machine learning doesn't use a lot of code, it's primarily using data. So there's very little code involved. But as I say, all of the code will be explained by the trainer during the course. So it's not a prerequisite. All right, thank you. So I've got a question here from Paul and he's asking if the exam is offered at any of the other training vendors. Um, do you mind if I answer that? Go for it. Okay, well, at the moment, the uh, because the certification is quite new, it is offered through RBCS and um, Dragonfly is currently preparing a training in the UK or Europe. But we are currently talking to other training providers um, who are interested in becoming certified and offering the training. And if you are a training provider and are interested in the product, you can contact us at any time and um, we'd be delighted to start working with you as well. Let me see. So I've got a question from Travis. Will there be a practice exam available for the course or the certification? I don't believe, Adam, um, that we currently have that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there, there, is a, there is a mock exam in the same way that there were, has been for other AFIQ qualifications like Selenium, but I'd not clear on when that will be made available. Okay, that's good news. Um, I will follow up on that and um, I will contact the person who asked the question um, and let you know when uh, the mock exam will be available because I'll be able to find out afterwards. Um, okay. How much hands-on is there at the course is the next question. There is some hands-on during the course. One example, as I said before, is, is using an AI testing tool in order to perform some testing. There is quite a number of group or solo activities relating to analyzing a system and identifying the correct testing strategies. But there is not a significant amount of hands-on machine learning, if that's the question. All right, thank you. Um, do I need to take the ISTQB Foundation exam to attend the training? It would be recommended that you have a good understanding of testing principles. We have assumed that anybody going on this course will have ISTQB Foundation or an equivalent mm -hmm. level of experience and knowledge of, of testing terminology. All right, thank you. Um, Let's see. The next question is what tools are you using at the course? So in the, uh, we, we use a tool called Jupyter Notebook in order to demonstrate interactively the use of machine learning. We use an open source tool, which uh, does, um, which is an AI based test automation tool. Those are the only tools that we use during the course of the, uh, the, the course, except PowerPoint, of course. <laughs> Thank you. We just got one more question. How does the course align with delivery methods, e.g. waterfall versus agile, etc.? Well, that's a good question. 
So I think we are 100% independent of delivery methodology. Um, I don't think we specify any requirement about the sequencing of the project. Now, that said, people obviously think about testing levels differently in an agile context. People often do multiple levels of testing within a sprint. So as long as you're comfortable with the difference between how things are discussed in, say, ISTQB language versus how they're applied in an agile context, you shouldn't have any problem at all. Thank you. Um, I'm not getting any new questions anymore. Does anyone have any more questions? No, I think we've run through all the questions. Well, thank you for those. Those were really good questions. Adam, is there anything that you would like to add to everything we said before we uh, end the session? I think just, just one thing, the, the use of AI uh, and the applicability of, of testing to AI is one of the number one problems being experienced by the AI development and design community. So I would personally recommend anyone who is, is working anywhere near an AI system, even if you don't want to come on this course, is to investigate some of the topics that I've talked about today and start to bolster your own personal knowledge, as this is probably the next boom in software testing. All right, well, thank you for that. And thank you very much for the presentation. If anyone has any questions that you th didn't think of this morning, but would like to ask us, you can always email us at ai at isqi.org. And we'll get back to you as soon as possible. As I said, this webinar has been recorded. Um, it will be made available to you um, within, say, the next week or so. Um, Again, if you have any questions in the meantime or um, are interested and want to learn more about how you can get certified, a uh, certified training provider, for example, or uh, certified as a candidate, contact us at ai at isqi.org. Thank you very much for attending this morning and I wish you a very good, very nice day. Thank you.